Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. Today we are going to be talking about my top 5 uh, favorite non-horror novels. This was a request by uh, Instagram user constant.reader1408. I'll leave a link to her down there in the doobly-doo. Um, but it looks like her name is Ray Dawn, R-A-E, uh, and then D-A-W-N with no space in the middle, but it's capital R and capital D. So, um, thank you for the request, and let's go ahead and jump right into it. At the number six spot, I know it's Top 5 Friday, hush. Um, I have an honorable mention, uh, I wanted to do only novels this time, so maybe I'll do novellas, you know, next time. But, Of Mice and Men, yes, they call it a novel, but I mean, it's only... 105 pages. That's it. So, I mean, I can't really call it a novel when it's probably something like 25, 30,000 words. Um, so, I, I'll call it a novella, but this is an honorable mention. Uh, I highly recommend, if you have not listened to the Gary Sinise narrated audio version, I highly recommend it. Everybody that I have recommended it to um, has thanked me for the recommendation. Uh, it is just that good. Uh, the 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 book, the story is perfect, in my opinion. It doesn't go on too long. The character development is on point, And the ending is perfect. So, let's get into the actual top five. At number five, I am going with The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I don't care much. Sorry, I got a hair. Got a hair. Um, I don't care much for YA. Uh, the only two uh, young adult authors that I have ever enjoyed is John Green and Andrew Smith, the guy that wrote Winger, Standoff, Grasshopper, Grasshopper Jungle, um, 100 Sideways Miles. He did a bunch of stuff. I'll do a video on him at some point. Uh, it's probably when uh, Grasshopper Jungle sequel comes out. But we're talking about John Green. I love this book. Um, it is in my top 20. Uh, it is... It's easily... What it easily made this list. I mean, the the top five here, all t f all five of these were very easy to pick out, um, but this was one of the first ones that I picked out. But I'm putting it at number five because it's not even my normal genre. Um, I don't care too much for YA, and I don't care too much for uh, romance or this. This is a very weird romance, but it is very romancy. Um, the the depth of emotion in here is far deeper, in my opinion, than anything else out there in YA that I have read. Um, I know my wife loves Angie Thomas, uh, the author of On the Come Up and Thug, or The Hate You Give, uh, either either one of those. I have not read those, but I, I want to get to them, but I'm almost upset, uh, I'm not upset, I'm almost wondering if, you know, I'll dislike it just because it's YA, because she also loved the Sun is also a star, I think it is, and I didn't like it. Uh, but this one is amazing. Um, that very, very, very close call here because I almost put Looking for Alaska on this list, but I think this one it has, a, has more emotional depth in it uh, than Looking for Alaska. Uh, next up, I, I do want to say something before we continue on. When, when I was asked to do this, um, the, the first thing that I told myself is you can't have anything that that can even be remotely considered horror on this list because for one you probably just start an ar argument down in the chat whether or not something is horror or not if I come even close so things like night film you um, by well night film by Marisha Passell and you by Caroline Kepnes those those books I have kind of left off even fashion victim um, and by uh, Amina Akhtar and Araminta Hall's Our Kind of Cruelty, even though those books are kind of horrifying, um, I, I, I didn't feel, uh, well, e even though those books are not labeled horror, they do have horrifying elements. So, I mean, even Jesmyn Ward stuff, uh, like Sing, Unburied Sing, would probably have hit this list, it pro that probably would have been my list, if there wasn't that that aspect, you know, at the end, there's like, there's like a horror aspect. I don't want to spoil it with what it is. Um, but that's the thing that was... Uh, thinking about when I went into this. So if you're wondering where you and Night Film and those books are, I'm not putting those on there. Maybe I will do a list. If you guys want to see a list of books that I consider horror that aren't labeled horror, please let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Next up, we have The Power of the Dog by Don Wilson. Um, I have not read the last book, The Border, and I did not care for 
uh, the cartel half as much as I love this one, probably because Colin didn't come back. Um, if that's a spoiler, I apologize. But this one, I read, it is a, hang on here, it is a 537 page book and I read it in three days. Uh, the only other author I ever do that with is Stephen King. Uh, I will pick up his books and I will read it over a long weekend, five, six hundred pages the first time I read it. This book is amazing. Don Wilson can write his ass off. Uh, the Cartel probably would have been better for me had I known that Callan wasn't going to be in there. Um, so I, it, was, it is a matter of my expectations, you know, screwing up a read, and I will likely end up rereading the whole series before I get to the border. So I will likely reread this one. And then I will reread The Cartel going into the border, and I'll probably enjoy it more. But this one, if you have not read Don Wilson, Wilson I, Winslow, I almost said Winslow, uh, Don Wilson, definitely go out and check out all of his stuff. I highly recommend starting with this one, because that's where I started. So, at the number three spot, not six, three, three, three number three spot, we are going with Gone with the Wind. I have written and deleted my review uh, for this book several times. Uh, the, the reason for that, it, this, this version is also falling apart. Um, it is literally glued, to, not glued, but it is taped together with clear tape. And um, I have another one that has the white. It's the exact same copy, but it doesn't have the painted uh, pages. And I really, really like the painted pages, so I'm holding on to this one. But uh, um, I never really cared too much for the movie. Uh, the book I absolutely loved. I read it a chapter at a time, um, maybe it's two chapters. I think it was two chapters because it has 60 chapters, I believe. Um, and I read it in a month, month of, yeah, it's 60 chap 62 chapters and I read it in the month of December, which has 31 days, so two chapters a day. Um, I was completely, completely just stuck in this world while the what while the civil war, war was happen happening all that stuff the was it reconstruction i cannot i can never remember what it's called but uh there there's a lot of talk about how this book is pro slavery or pro uh, the south during that time i don't feel that way if that was the author's intention whatever um as far as i'm concerned this is a perfect portrait of how ugly the the southern United States is, especially during that time. Um, and there's a little there's a, the book is Schadenfreude for me. I hope I said that right. Um, it's watching all these bad things happen to these terrible fucking people, um, you know, Scarlet and all that. I mean, even e to to some extent, the one like bad guy I get Rhett, the uh, the one anti-hero. I don't know what you want to call him. Um, he's the only one who t really talks any sense in the book, and he's the only one who I felt wasn't racist for the, you know, just the, just because, he was only racist because the time frame was racist. Everybody else was just a terrible fucking person. Um, and maybe, uh, not Ashley, but who's Ashley's, uh, a wife or girlfriend or whoever it is? That lady, she was okay too. Um, but everybody in this book, everybody in this book catches hell. Um, even, even Rhett to some extent, even though Rhett has the best and Rhett, you know, travels the world and y you can see the culture in him. And I appreciated that because he was smart enough to go and visit other places and leave the South. Whereas you had all these other people stuck in the South, stuck in their ways. And I thought that, that metaphor, whether or not the author meant it or not. Um, another thing. Uh, in here is I, I from what I understand from reading articles about this uh, book the uh, Margaret Mitchell actually checked almanacs for the weather that happened so that she even got the weather right on the days that she was writing about that's some insane research but moving on to number two After Dark by Haruki Murakami um, this was my introduction to Haruki Murakami and I absolutely fell in love with him. My buddy Gregor said, hey, well, actually, I, I asked him about 1Q84, which is a 1,200-page book. And he said, it'd probably start with, you know, something like After Dark, which is super short. And After Dark is, I think, uh, 200 
243 pages, 245 pages, something like that. It reads insanely quick. I read this in two sittings over the course of maybe three or four hours, and I, I don't, I'm not a fast reader. I'm not a speed reader. Um, but the, uh, the television segments were my favorite part. It was just so weird. Um, and I love weird as long as weird is done well with some kind of meaning. Um, if your weird is just there to be weird, I had a friend tell me he just got through reading a, a book, uh, a horror novel, where there's a g giant, you know, duck, well, you don't know, but there's a giant duck with a giant penis comes and, like, rapes a dude to death at the end of the book. That kind of weird shit, I mean, if there's no point to it, then I don't care too much about it. The weird in Haruki Murakami stuff is amazing. Uh, he does surrealist fiction, I think, better than anybody else. He does magical realism terrifically, um, and he's easily one of my favorite authors, and this is one of my favorite non-horror books. I don't think there's anything in here that can be confused with horror. Some of the best scenes in this book are just two people sitting in a diner talking. Um, and then, But my favorite scenes are the television scenes, and once you read the book, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And last... Certainly not least, I almost didn't put this on the list, and it ended up being at number one. So take take that for what, for what you will. Um, there's a character in here that is absolutely horrifying, and that's why I I didn't I, I didn't want to put it on this list. But at the end of the day, I really uh, it's my favorite non-horror novel, even though there are aspects of it, and I know I'm breaking my own rules, but uh, there are aspects of it that are that are absolutely terrifying. As One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. Uh, Nurse Ratchet is one of the best villains of all time. The, what she does to Murphy and, and what everything that happens um, with Chief and all that. This book it, I, this is one of the only books that I have read more than five times other than Stephen King's It. I've read this probably ten times at, at this point. I mean, it's, it's super short. It's only 272 pages, and it's a very small, even though it, it's kind of dense. Um, but the the level of emotion and the level of characterization, the character development in here is what is what I came to love. And the ending, like of Mice and Men, is absolutely perfect. Pitch perfect. I don't think there is a single piece of this book that you could do away with um, without damaging the overall story. It is one of those perfect experiences for me, and of course, it's my number one. But if I had to choose, if I had to put Of Mice and Men on this list, Of Mice and Men would likely be above this one just because of the succinct nature of it, just because there's no wasted word. And that's one of the things that Steinbeck was so good at. Kessie is great too, but there there is something to be said about the power of brevity. And in Of Mice and Men, I don't think that story could have been any shorter, any longer. In this one, I don't think it could have either, but it's less time-consuming. If that makes sense, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. If you think I'm crazy, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, and also, let me know what your top five non-horror novels are of all time, maybe top ten, give me whatever, give me however many you want to. If you want to put a hundred down there, that's your typing time you got to take. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye Seasons don't fear the reaper, nor do the sun, nor we know the rain.